Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we are answering is, what's in the box in, of, of this? What What is this thing? I, I had no idea this was coming. I don't know quite what it is. This says it's Dungeons and Dragons, like the role-playing game, the fantasy RPG, the godfather of most fantasy RPGs. I, I have been a Dungeons and Dragons fan since 1984. What is this new D&D thing? Adventure Begins. It's a cooperative board game. No board game, not role-playing game. It says your first fast entry into the worlds of Dungeons and Dragons. Your fun fast entry into the worlds of Dungeons and Dragons. So this is a cooperative board game for ages 10 plus for two to four players i have no idea what they've done to distill DD into this box here uh this is published by hasbro which is the company that owns wizards of the coast which owns dungeons and dragons and thankfully it does have a wizards of the coast logo on it so at least they used some of the DD team to write this i i don't know what to expect i honestly have no idea what's going to be in this box you're going to get to experience it with me for the first time as i take a look at what's in here um, what I will do quickly is read off the back of the box, which doesn't say much at all. Dungeon Dragons Adventure Begins, the perfect adventure for new heroes. Adventure Begins is a cooperative fantasy board game for the whole family set in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. Defeat monsters, collect treasure, be a hero. A new adventure every time you play. So there's a couple things there that I gotta unpack. World of Dungeons & Dragons, which one? There are tons. I'm gonna guess the Forgotten Realms? Maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, defeat monsters, collect treasure, be a hero. Well, that does sound like D&D &D to me. And a new adventure every time you play. Sounds like there's going to be something in here, some kind of random element to add replayability. Uh, there's a box picture of all the contents, but we're about to open this up and take a look. So we'll do that then. I am going to cut the shrink on this, and then we will be tipping down and looking at what's in the box. All right, here we have the box for Dungeon Dragons Adventure Begins. Part one, this is a very thin, flimsy box. Uh, you can kind of see it's already bowed a bit. Uh, we have not had this game long. It hasn't been stacked with other games. This is a very thin, almost paper box. Very thin box here. Not that I think it's going to fall apart or anything, but just like when you get a board game, you expect something a little more solid than this. We don't have the rule book on top. So we have some punch boards here with various locations on them. This says Mount Hote now, Neverwinter Woods. So uh, as a long-term fan of Dungeons and Dragons, I do now know this game is set in the Forgotten Realms. Not that everyone would know that. I am going to punch this quickly just so we can show it. Not a two-sided board. That seems like a missed opportunity. Like, especially if it's supposed to be... Uh, multiple adventures and change every time you'd expect the map tiles to be two-sided uh definitely not something i don't think i'm going to steal and use for my D, D games my full game because you don't have like a grid on here or a full map but we have this uh what i do see is that it's got oh let's punch one wait okay, not the best cut i haven't had this hard a time taking out like it's it's well attached here you can kind of hear that there we go so we have the one board, and what I noticed is you'll be able to attach these once you get them punched. Note, this isn't doing any damage to it, but just, I usually expect my punch boards to come apart a little easier. Alright, so what we'll see here is, see these attached together. Except the art doesn't quite line up. It's close. Oh, I am using the green map on the green screen. Probably not a good idea. So you get these attached in a different way. So we have these two. We have two more. So we also have Gauntlegrim and Neverwinter, which is usually covered in snow. So we have a city, a couple cities here. Uh, again, same type of boards, single sided. We have the rule book. Surprisingly thick for a Hasbro game. So first off, components. All right, thumbs up for this. A shot of all the components, including showing the backs of the card decks. That's a nice touch. I love having getting to see every single component in a game all summarized well. 
Bonus points for that. Uh, we have a table of contents, so this is long enough. Let's see, we're going to have some plastic stuff in here. Text could definitely be... Why, why is this so small? Like, why isn't this book bigger? All right, whatever. I would have liked a little bigger text and a little bigger book. So here we see one setup, potential setup. Looks like there's going to be some kind of things to hold the cards. That looks interesting. Plastic card holders. How to play. Look, you have like a character standee and character sheets that stand in them. Oh, there's some kind of... Here, let's... Like a little player tray thing. That looks kind of neat. It's interesting. We'll see if I'll be able to figure out how to put those together without having actually... So we're going to have trackers that get to attached to the side of cards. Hopefully those work very well. I've seen those implemented in other games by Hasbro not so well. Hopefully you don't have to get the upgrade in a year from now. And again, we're going to have some trackers on cards on the edges. Hopefully they've learned from the mistakes with some of their previous games. Uh, we have another punch boards. Oddly thinner punch boards. So we have four different boards, one for each character. I have no idea. Nope. Those are monsters. Oh, wow. Okay. Now we're looking like D&D. &D. You got some, some pretty well-known monsters here. Dragons, Beholders, um, I, maybe an Aboleth? No, it's a Kraken. Okay. I'm like, that'd be a unique Aboleth. And uh, a Fire Giant. And then on the side, you obviously have the monster stats and tracking. This does not look super light. Like, I see a number of different things here. It looks like you roll a d10 to see what they do, and then the effect, right? So, d10, if you roll a 6 to 9, it uses its giant sword. Um, there's an after-defeat section, and then these would be... If these are character classes, you've got some really unique character classes. They may not be, though. So, you have... These must be NPCs. So, you have the healer, the bandit, the genius, the peacekeeper, the rebel, the fixer, the outlaw, and the trickster. And then on the other side, it's completely different. So it's possible these are different character classes that, like, the green person gets to pick. Or not. I don't know. The Seeker, the Scholar, the Enforcer, the Gambler, the the wand, what, Wanderer. Wow. The Champion, the Sage, and the Tornado. Okay. I'm going to punch one of these. See, uh, same thing. These could be better. But it's not terrible. It's not tearing any of the card or anything. All right, now we have heroes, right? Oh, okay. Here we have some stuff that is well punched. The gold coins. Yeah, so here we have four four characters in the colors. And then level two, level three. Level one, level two. So you have a character card. And then you have multiple level cards to go on top of them. And you have a bunch of coins. I'm intrigued. I could say that. I am intrigued. I'm missing a miniature. So there you go. We, we are short a mini. That's always awesome. I'm glad my kids didn't open this. So we have the invisible character here. So I'm going to, one of the first things I'm going to have to do with this game is contact Hasbro and figure out what to do about having a missing miniature. So that's great. We are missing the green character. Great job there, Hasbro. Maybe it's somewhere in the box, but it's not looking like it. All right. Up next, I have a bag of dice and a standee. All right, so we have a pretty standard RPG D10, though it says 10 instead of 0, which is interesting. You don't usually see that. Yeah, it actually has a number 10. Wow. Okay. We'll throw that in here. Then we have 4 D20. Uh, numbered 1 to 20, I don't see anything special. Yeah, number 1 to 20 in four different colors. Uh, the invisible one there is a green. So in each of the player colors, always nice getting some new D20s. We have standees, which based on the back of the box is going to hold up one of those monsters. Which I put over here somewhere. That's good. There we go. We now have the Kraken in a standee. That standee went on really nice. We now have the Kraken in a standee. Then we have the tracker thing. So this is the little clip that we're going to use to track things. And this clips onto here like so. 
And to be honest, that works well enough. I can easily read that as 10. And then on the character cards. Okay. I'm not sure where to put this stuff, so we have that little tracker thing. Okay, these are nice. So this is the player thing to fold up the player boards. Which we're going to try to find because I don't even see those. What goes in this? So what I thought was nice is there's a slider on the bottom here. Going from 1 to 10. That slides nice and easy, and it actually, like, there's a notch at each one. I like that. So what this is going to be built out of is three parts. So let's do one right now. So yes, this is a personality type. So there are four of these for each character class. So here, as I get the other pieces, you're going to slot that in there. And then you're also going to add the hero tile. So we're going to throw that over here. Okay, that's cool. And then you're going to add your level, your combat tile. Oh, and there's two different ones still. So there's, there's, I can see, here's some replayability, that's for sure. There you go. That's, uh, th that's well done. That is a neat piece of board gaming right there. So you would have your, your stand, I, standing it up isn't working very well. So there's an example of a completed character from Adventure Begins. The Human Sorcerer. And you can change all these. Like, these are all two-sided. Um, now I'm Kia Astrano instead. So that's cool. Impressed by that. Let's move on. So there are four of those. Then we have this thing, which I'm going to, again, I'm going to grab the rule book and try to figure out what I'm supposed to slot into here. All right. So the tray part up here gets the D10. That goes in there. And then the scenario card is going to go on the top. So I don't have that yet. So we're going to put that aside. And we're going to jump over here to these decks of cards. We're going to toss the money in one of these corners. All right, what do we got? So we have four cards that summarize combat and shopping. So obviously there's shopping and combat. I... Assume that's what was for cards. I guess they have to lay flat. Here, let's flip these over and look. We have a whole bunch of backpack things. Backpack cards that literally say backpack. Explorer's backpack. It tells you what's in there. There's a frying pan, a spyglass, a book of languages, and climbing harness. Well, they're actually all different, so that's cool. Jester costume disguise kit, antique bagpipes, five daggers for juggling. That's kind of cool. All right, I like that. Throw that in there. Then what we got? Then we have... Here we have some enemies or something. I don't even know. So here's Death Kiss. Looks at... It's a, it's a creepy... The Beholder cards. So yes, I have Beholder 1, 2, Fire Giant 1, 3, Fire Giant 2. I don't know if these are action cards. So what we also have is, again, we're going to clip things on here. Where did that clip go? So in this case, the clip goes the other way, like that. So it's actually like a two-sided clip. And it actually slides on these cards pretty well. So this one doesn't have a lot of numbers on it, but this one, for example, does. And we're going to throw this on here, and it's pretty easy to see that's on a three. So that's a, that's a I'm, I'm surprised by how well this clip works, especially based on their past experience. All right, so then I have a whole bunch, Green Dragon 2, Green Dragon 1. So there's three different cards for each one. Kraken 1, 2, 3. So there's three different cards for each of the monsters. And I don't know if those are considered the scenarios cards, but I think so. So that's going to go up here. 
So you would have this thing with the scenario on top of it. And then the deck gets slid in here. Next, we have a bunch of item cards, which probably have really cool D&D style artwork on them. Oh, yeah. We got to have a pet mimic. Come on. Ponderous Tomes. Axe of the Dwarvish Lord. Giant Toad. That's an item. Okay, sure. Bottomless Potion of Swagger. <laughs> Spider Cloak. Oh, look at this. There is a baby owl bear in this game. Oh. Fuzzy and Fierce. It calls you mama. That's not me. That was on the card. What the heck? Not a joke. Tangle up your enemies in a stressful ball of string. But not a joke. The one ring. Wow. Rule them all. That's not from the card. Pseudo dragon. The liar. <laughs> the liar liar pants on fire. Someone likes puns at Wizards of Ghost. All right, we're going to throw these in here. Throw these in here. Crack open the next deck of cards. Oh, uh, it's black. We have we have the black card. No clue. I'm guessing. Wow. Someone also is a Monty Python fan. We have a shrubbery. Wow, what the heck? Maybe this is an encounter card. And then we have Drop Some Mad Libs. A very pop culture version of Dungeons and Dragons. Get out of my swamp. Kaboom. Stuck in the mud. And we have another license here. We have My Little Pony characters showing up in a Dungeons and Dragons game. Which Hasbro does own the license to My Little Pony, so I guess that's fair. This is a pop culture meets Dungeons and Dragons. So, I have a whole bunch of different cards here. Card art's pretty good. Mixed bag. Uh, you have the damsel distress signal. Follow the leader. Witch or wicked. You have Jack's beans. The lizard queen. The owlbear, who's probably looking for... And each of these has stats on the back. Alright, I'm not going to go through the whole deck. It's a whole bunch more of that. Some are puns, some are not. you got the halfling pirate. You got the rock, just a whole bunch of different cards here. I don't, I'm not sure how these should be sorted, so I'm just throwing them in here haphazardly, which means I'm not going to be able to shut the box, it looks like. One more pack of cards, assuming it looks like the same stuff. So far, I have no idea what this game's about or what to expect. I, the, the components did not tell me at all. We have another black card. So yeah, we have more. When Swords Fly, Abracadabra, Sneak Attack, Hot Pockets. Um, again, sticking with the, the, the pop culture. Loot, loot, loot! You have Sally, who I think is a kobold. Shady Customer. There, that's definitely a D&D trope. With stuff on the back. Much more cards. Black puddings. Ceramic golem. Ceramic golem. I gotta say, the cards don't really tell me what's gonna happen here. It looks like you're gonna draw a card and counter the card using this thing to go through it. The rest of the deck's probably gonna go in the bottom. That's about all I can tell you. Um, that's it. That's what we have. We have gold. We have a bunch of card decks that, geez, that's... Maybe the lid's gonna fit on top. Maybe if I split these in half so they're kind of... There, now they're kind of leaning. Having to have my decks lean. So there, that's, so you can see that. You have to have the decks lean to actually clear the top of the box. Because if they stand up, it doesn't clear the top of the box. It's an interesting design choice there. Uh, we have miniatures. I can show off three of them. We have someone running with a sword. Wow, that is not getting picked up well by the camera. How about this camera? No, not that well by that camera either. So these are um, flimsier plastic, like that sword's bending easily in my hand. Not the most detailed miniatures I've seen. Uh, this is some kind of Dragonborn, which is neat. Um, for, for a company that has miniatures produced by WizKids, I'm a little surprised they didn't stick with better quality miniatures here. These feel like toys, um, something you get in a Cracker Jack box. Though D&D, so I guess that's cool. Plus... I guess you keep this plastic thing to keep the miniature safe. 
Um, this is an obvious dwarf. Here's a dwarf. You can see the dwarf. My contrast just isn't quite at what it should be. You can see them a little better. But again, like just a kind of cheap plastic. Not a lot of detail. It's not terrible. You could paint this up. Just when there's WizKids miniatures for D&D, I expected WizKid miniatures quality. Then we have a magic user. We can actually see that one a little better. And while I have no idea what the green character is, yet again, my copy of Dungeons & Dragons Adventure Begins, more importantly, my daughter's copy of D&D Adventures Begins is missing one of the four miniatures. Not much I can do about that at this point. I will have to contact them and get it, see what they'll do about it. So that's it. Whole bunch of cards, uh, big standees for boss monsters. This part looks really neat, this whole build your character from a bunch of different random parts so that every game is different. That looks really cool. I have no idea how much this will feel like an actual Dungeons & Dragons game. We're just going to kind of haphazardly put this stuff back in. The problem is I don't think it's going to, uh, it's not going to fit with the cards unless I punch this stuff. And I don't know, there's no explanation of what goes where in this box insert, so just kind of winging it here. Okay, this one will fit. Yeah, that'll fit beside. This will fit. That'll fit beside. These should all fit beside. There we go. That'll work. Adventure begins. All right, there you get to see what's in the box with my copy of Adventure Begins, which hopefully is less complete than your copy of Adventure Begins. Um, bummer right from this, well, not from the start, but once I saw it, you never like getting an incomplete game. That's always a letdown, kind of takes the fire away from everything, takes away the, oh, I'm so looking forward to playing this game. And, well, I have a missing component. I can't play this for players. And, well, I want to play this with my two daughters and my wife. We bought this to play as a family, and I can't. So, um, shame on Hasbro for their quality control for Dungeons & Dragons Adventure Begins. Trying to overlook that. Um, looks interesting. I have no clue what the gameplay is going to be about. Uh, the rulebook was thicker than I expected, especially for a Hasbro game. I was expecting something simpler. Uh, though it's definitely not at any level of feeling like, like say, Dungeons & Dragons or a Dungeons & Dragons starter set. This is definitely a board game. You just have a single D20. The monsters use a D10. Um, what I did like is it looked like there's some really cool character customization options. They look like it's going to add a lot of replayability to the game. The maps can also be set up in different patterns. There's four different map tiles you can rearrange different ways. Um, and lots of different monsters to fight, tons of different item cards, stuff like that. It does look very interesting. I'm just bummed that my game's not complete. Other than that, I am looking forward to checking this game out, seeing just how much of a Dungeons & Dragons experience it gives. I am an experienced D&D player, have been since the 80s. So I am looking forward to seeing what they're presenting to a new generation. I will say one thing. They are throwing in an awful lot of pop culture references and puns. I wasn't expecting that. They obviously didn't take things all that seriously uh, with this particular edition of the game. I wasn't expecting nearly as much uh, stuff that would be relevant to kids these days. Maybe that's just me being old. I don't know. So there you have it. Dungeons & Dragons Adventure Begins. What you get in the box. So I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You just got to see... What's in the box for Adventure Begins. If you are interested in other gaming content, head over to TabletopBellhop.com. You can always hit me up on social media as TabletopBellhop, one word on pretty much every site that's out there. Check out my Instagram, my Pinterest, uh, follow me on Twitter, like our page on Facebook, you know, all that fun stuff. All those places were all the places all over the web. And you can also, if you enjoyed this video, hit us up on Patreon.com slash TabletopBellhop. Uh, that's about it for me tonight. Uh, I got an email I need to write to Wizards of the Coast and send them a picture of a uh, missing miniature now. So good night and game on.